Well, hi everybody, it's David Burt. And uh, today I'm gonna to be talking about the Overtone series. And uh, that allows us access into this area for open harmony or open voicing. How is it that I can play a C chord here, but if I were to move it down an octave, it sounds rather rough to say the least. Well, of course, there are reasons for that. It has to do, of course, with physics and, and acoustic science. And a Greek mathematician by the name of Pythagoras, who, oh, about 250 BC, was a chap who discovered that vibration creates sound. So this piece of tape that I've got here represented, let's say, for example, uh, uh, a two-meter string. If I if it had a certain amount of tension from point to point and I caused it to vibrate, let's say it produced this particular C. What do you think would happen if I put my finger at exactly the halfway point, tension remaining the same, and only permitted half of the string to vibrate? Any idea what note I'd get? Well, you may have guessed that it might be the next C up. So that's why C is C and C is C up here. Same note, but you say, wait a minute, that's higher in pitch than that, yes. But it's the same note because it's double the frequency of its original counterpart. If I were to put my finger at the quarter point and only allowed a quarter of the string to vibrate, well, you guessed it, it would be squared again and it would be the next C up. So every time you half a string or a pipe or anything like that, you're going to get the next octave up. And we can relate that to the uh, pipe organ. Let's say this low F here represented a 32 foot uh, organ pipe. Well, a similar 16 foot pipe would produce this F and an eight foot pipe would get this F and a four foot, a two foot and a one foot, so on and so forth, which covers the whole range of, uh, of the piano. So every time you have something, that's what, what uh, we go up an octave. Now, strings or anything that's caused to vibrate do similar things on their own. And let's just look at the, the science of that. Here I have my string from here to here. I'm gonna cause it to vibrate. It produces this note. I'm gonna call that the first partial because that's the initial sound that we hear when the string vibrates from this point to this point. But within a fraction of a second, right at the center point, the string starts to bow out this way and causes, of course, an overtone the next octave up. So you initially hear this as the full string's vibrating. Here, you get the overtone of it vibrating from here to here. And within a split second, it goes into thirds. So the third vibrates, third and a third, and then it breaks into quarters and into fifths, and we can scope it right up to the 13th, what we call 13th partial. We're only gonna look at the first five partials. So let's just review. If I initiate the first partial, this C, that's my initial note. The overtone that I get from that, the second partial is the next C up. The third partial is the perfect fifth above that. The fourth partial being squared, I'm gonna get the next C up. And the fifth partial is a major third above that. And as I said, it continues on up, but we're only gonna look at the first five partials. Say, well, gee, this is very interesting, but what the heck has that got to do with playing the piano, especially in this area? It has an awful lot to do with it. Our musical instruments for North America and, and all of Europe and a lot of countries in the world have a standard pitch, and that is the A above metal C vibrates at 440 vibrations per second. So we call that A440. So Everything being equal, if this A is vibrating at 440 cycles, the A above that would be vibrating at 880. The next A would be 1760 vibrations. But it's more important if we go back this direction. So if this A is 440, the one below it, half the vibration, 220. Next octave down, 110. Next octave down, 55. And here's the baby down here, the bottom of the piano, vibrating at 27 and a half vibrations per second. This is what we consider the cutoff point. The vast majority of pianos, that's where we end. There are the odd exceptions where they'll go lower than that. But most standard pianos will end here. And there's a reason for that. Although we can hear below the pitch of 27 and a half vibrations per second, we have difficulty understanding the, the, the pitch between them. For example, I'm gonna do a little test. I'm gonna hit 
uh, two notes. Tell me which note is the highest to your ear. The first note I play or the second note? Let's do another test. Which note is higher, the first note or the second note? Well, if you guess the first note was higher, you're right on the first test and the second note was higher on the second test. And if you're a female, pat yourself on the back because you People usually do a better job on the higher end of the piano and beat out the guys up there. But you can have to admit that it's difficult to hear the difference in pitch. So if we can't distinguish the difference in pitch, what's the point of going any further? So this has a lot to do with what we can do in this area of the piano. Let me show you. If I start off initiating this low A, 27 and a half vibrations per second, Call out the first partial, that's the string vibrating from point to point. Within a split second, it bows in half, and I get the overtone in this A. Then it vibrates and it breaks up into thirds, I get the perfect fifth above that. Into quarters, it's squared off, it gets the A there. And the fifth partial is the major third above that, which is a C sharp. And that C sharp is what we call the safe low limit. This is critical of what we can do and what we can't do. Now it varies from piano to piano. A grand piano will have a lower safe low limit than uh, this piano. Um, electric piano probably has a higher safe low limit. But this is a good standard to go by. So when I play my A chord here, and if I were to ask you what note is the root, would you say, well, it's the A. But if I were to ask you what is the acoustic root, well, it's way down here. So this chord's acoustic root is here. So if I start dropping this down, the acoustic root drops off the end of the piano. Therefore, if we have trouble distinguishing single notes down here, we're certainly gonna have trouble hearing the clarity of these chords. And you can hear it happen. Here's my C chord. I'm dropping down towards a safe low limit. Coming to the B flat. Now I'm right on the borderline. Right there. Now listen to the chord as it diminishes in sound and quality and goes totally grungy on us. So if this B flat chord here is totally unacceptable, but since the problem seems to be the third, if I can get the third above my safe low limit, the C sharp, the C sharp found below middle C, I'm going to take it up past the B flat and bring it to here and voila, the chord is clear as a bell. Here's my C chord. Totally unacceptable down here, but take the E and bring it up here. It's clear as a bell. And this allows us access into this area, which on the next video you tune into, we're going to take this information and show you some voicings of open harmony. Hope you enjoyed the little tutorial and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Have a great day. Bye now.